Hi, my name is Emily. I'm going to be explaining how you guys will make NICU baby gowns for the NICU unit. So the first thing you need to do is print out the pattern on 8.5 by 11 paper. It will be attached to the video. So once you have it all printed out, you want to start cutting it out um, on the lines, like so, or just outside the lines to make sure you can still see them. So now that you've cut out your three pieces, you should have one labeled A, B, and C. On A, you will notice that it says to cut on the fold here. This is important for later, but so you have your cut, you have it all cut out already. So next thing you want to do is figure out what you have your fabric. So I am using a flannel because it is soft and warm for the babies, and it's rather durable. Um, I'm using two different colors to make it easier to tell which side I'm working on later. You do not have to, but it's pretty interesting if you do. So you want to wash and dry your fabric. I've done that already. And then you'll notice it's pretty wrinkly, which makes you want to make sure you iron it next. So that way it's nice and flat when you're cutting it out. Okay, now we're going to iron our fabric. There's a few safety tips I'm going to go through first. Um, so for your ironing board or whatever surface you're doing the ironing work on, you want to make sure it's stable and not going to be rocking around while you're moving and ironing your stuff because the iron will be hot. Another one is, even though the iron doesn't look hot, it will be hot. And you want to make sure if there's people around you, they're aware of that. And you want to keep track of the iron so you don't accidentally bump it with your own arm, because that can hurt. Also, you want to make sure if people are around you that you keep an eye on your cord so it doesn't get thrown out of your hands. So, first thing you want to do is make sure your iron is on, and then make sure it's on the right setting. So, for mine, it's on setting 6 because this is cotton. Um, Depending on the type of fabric you have, it can change and vary depending on the type of heat it can handle. So the next thing you want to do is you want to put your fabric on the ironing board uh, pattern side or right side down. So that way, if there's anything on the iron or it's a little hot, you don't damage the outside of the fabric. So then we iron it. So while you're ironing, you want to make sure you're keeping a constant movement because if you let the iron sit on fabric too long, it will burn. Um, it's a fairly quick step that should only take maybe a couple minutes depending on how bad the wrinkles in the fabric are. Okay, now your fabric should be all ironed up and you have it flat. So you want to take your pieces I've already done this and cut it to about the size so that way I can fit my pattern on it. I'm going to be starting with cutting the orange. So for patterns part B and C, you only have to cut one piece of each. So when you're cutting it, you want to make sure you want to line it up before you start cutting to make sure you have enough fabric. Um, and then if you have a pattern like this, you probably want to make sure it's all facing the same direction so it's not all crazy looking. Um, so when you're cutting, you want to make sure the fabric is right side or the pattern side up. And then you also want your pattern, the part with the words, should be facing up. So I'm going to lay mine out. And then I have the other piece for part A. So for this, I'm going to pin it. There's a few different ways to um, hold get the pattern in place on the fabric. Um, you can use Taylor's chalk or uh, erasable marker or fabric markers that are removable and trace around the outside of the pattern. I'm going to be pinning it, which is easier in some cases. So you're just going to put your pins through. Um, you don't need too, too many. It's really up to you how secure it is and how you do it. I find it the best way to secure it is to go along with whatever side you're pinning instead of trying to pin it inwards. So like this. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up this piece first because I know there's enough room. So then, once it's pinned, you want to cut it out. Just cut along the outside of the pattern. Oh, 
Okay, so I cut out my B and C pieces. You want to keep track of them. They're rather easy. Now is the harder part of the pattern. So we have part A, which has the cut on fold area. That means you just want to fold your fabric in half so it is double sided. So that way you have two layers of thickness. Then you want to put your straight edge, which has the label fold, on the fold. Then you can pin it and cut it out. Okay, once you finish up cutting piece A, you should have something that looks like this. Now I'm going to show you the other way to cut out things using Taylor's chalk. So I have my purple fabric here. When you're using Taylor's chalk, you want to have it inside out if you're going to fold it, or you just want to have your wrong side or the non-patterned side up. This way, if it doesn't come out fully when you're using the Taylor's chalk, it does not permanently stain the garment. Similar to how we iron it while it's upside down. So you want to pick Taylor's chalk. I'm using this. It melts off and comes off when you iron it or there's heat. So I have folded my piece in half and I'm going to do my side A and then you simply trace around the edge with your tailor's chalk. I prefer this method. Um, personally. And so once you have it all traced, you can cut it out. Because I only need the two layers of the A, I'm going to cut off this excess part, um, which I will use to cut out the single layer of parts B and C. Okay, we now have all our pieces cut out, and we're going to start pinning them to prepare. So since we're doing a double side, we have to do the one side first, followed by the other side before we sew them together. So you want to take your part A and lay it with the right side up. Then you want to take your part C and put it right side down, lining up the corner to the your left hand corner. And then you want to take a pin and pin it like so. This will make up one shoulder of the garment. Okay, now you want to take your part B and do the same on the other side. You may need to use more than one pin. It's really up to you. You will do the same thing for the other piece of your garment. Okay, before we start actually sewing, I'm gonna go over some basic sewing machine safety tips. The first is you wanna make sure your sewing machine is on a stable table so that it will not shake or rock or move around. Um, another is to make sure your cords are not gonna be caught or twisted on anything while you're sewing. Um, then we're going to cover some stuff with the needle. So when you're sewing, you want to make sure that your hands and fingers don't get too close to the needle. Um, you also want to make sure the needle will not be coming down on the presser foot, which can cause it to break or bend. The same is true. You want to make sure you take out your pins because it is possible for the needle to hit the pin and then break or bend, which can be dangerous. Okay, now we're going to start sewing. I have a bowl that I keep my pins in. That way I can just easily take my pins and put them in the bowl so they don't roll around while I'm sewing. We are using a quarter inch seam allowance, which is you generally line it up with the edge of your presser foot here with the edge of your fabric. So now I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to take out my pin. Then you want to line up your fabric, put down your needle, then drop the presser foot. Do a stitch backwards and then pull forward and then do a back stitch at the end once again and then you can cut off the extra threads and that is your first shoulder is done. You will repeat this process with the other shoulder. Okay, once you've sewn all four of the shoulders, you're going to want to press the seams flat. I've already done this. Then you want to take the first piece and lay it flat on the table or wherever you're going to be pinning and have it with the right side or the pattern side up. Then you want to take the other piece and lay it down on top, matching it up as best you can with the pattern side or the right side down. Now you're going to pin along the edges where you're going to sew, leaving about a two inch gap at the bottom here. This will be used to turn it right side out later on.
So you should pin it where you feel you need to. I would suggest doing the corners and then along the sides. Um, that is usually easiest. Okay, so I have pinned the two pieces of fabric back together. You'll notice that um, in the section that I want to leave unsewn, I put the pins going inwards. This is to let me know where to start and stop so I don't accidentally close up the whole thing. Next, I start sewing it. Okay, so I'm going to be starting at this first pin that's facing inwards. And so, one, you want to make sure you put down your needle first. We are, once again, using the one-fourth seam allowance, so you want to line up with the edge of your presser foot. And then, when you start, you want to make sure you backstitch to secure it, and then you can go. Okay, so when you're sewing with the shoulder, you want to make sure that even though you pressed it open, it might not stay open while you're sewing. So to make sure it stays open, you want to make sure it's open while you're sewing over it. When you're doing sharper corners, you want to make sure that if you need to adjust your fabric, you put the needle down first before raising your presser foot so that you don't lose your place. Okay, once you're done sewing, you want to make sure you uh, snip your threads and then you may need to start looking at your finer corners and stuff and see if there's a large excess pieces of fabric. You may need to trim your corners so that they don't bunch up while you're in when you turn it right side out. Once you've clipped your corners, you are ready to turn your gown right side out. You will need either a chopstick or a skewer for this. So you're going to start by slowly pushing all the pieces through that two inch gap that you left at the bottom. And once everything is through that, you may be able to reach in your hand and help it out, but if not, for all of it, you will need your skewer to help push everything so that it's facing the right direction. Okay, once you have it mostly turned right side out, you want to take your little poking tool and use it to make the corners all nice and sharp. So you just use it and you poke gently. Um, if you are using a skewer, you want to make sure you're not using the pointy side of the skewer, otherwise it can tear through the fabric. You want to make sure you're using the blunt side of the pokey skewer thing. As you're turning it right side out, you might notice you have a hole where you either didn't have all the fabric lined up perfectly so that you missed it. You just need to turn it back inside out and sew over that area, making sure you're getting both pieces of fabric that time. It is common um, for that to happen in long stretches or around the corners. If you accidentally clip it, it can also cause a hole around the corners, so you want to make sure you're careful of that. Okay, next I'm going to press it flat using an iron before I top stitch it so it's all nice and flat. And the reason we're going to be doing a top stitch is so that when it gets washed, it does not end up bunching up or having corners return back inside it. Okay, now I'm getting ready to do the top stitch after I ironed it. So, you want to make sure you fold this opening in. You can pin it closed um, if it's not staying nicely. Like so. Um, depending on the size of the gap, you may use more than one pin. Um, when we go to top stitch it, we are using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to just sew around the entire edge of the fabric. And you want to make sure you seal up this opening down here. Okay, I finished my top stitch. I decided, because I like the look of it, to do a zigzag stitch for my top stitch. Uh, this is not necessary. And... It can be a little more difficult, so if you're newer to this, I would suggest staying with the straight stitch. Our next step is attaching the Velcro. Okay, now we're going to be attaching the Velcro. So you want to fold the gown how it would be folded for a baby to be wearing it. So you take the two pieces that are hanging up, and you fold them over each other. Then you want to attach the Velcro. I'm using sticky Velcro, so you stick on the soft side onto the smaller piece here. 
and you want to try and line it up with the widest parts of this piece. Then you take these two tabs and fold them over like so. Even though I'm using sticky Velcro, you're going to still want to sew it down so that it doesn't come off at a later date because it doesn't always stick well to all types of fabrics. Once you're done sewing the uh, Velcro on, you're going to want to clip your threads. Um, you might want to pay attention because the rough side of the Velcro will tend to cling on to loose threads. So you definitely want to pay attention to that when you're clipping. And now you are all done making a Nikki baby gown. Voila!